بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Indeed our praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, sustainer and controller of the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It seems like our beloved month and our blessed month of Ramadan is going so fast. Now we have reached a point where we will soon begin the last 10 days of this blessed month. And these are the last 10 days that the Prophet وسلم, by his own example would work even harder in worship and in prayers. As we are told in the authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, when the last 10 days of Ramadan began, the Prophet Shadda Mi'zara wa ahya laylahu wa ayqaba ahla. He would tighten his belt. And this tightening of the belt, the scholars have discussed this and they have given their views and opinions as to exactly what this means. Uh, and Ibn Hajar rahimahullah in his discussion of this hadith in his book Fatul Bari, he talked about these uh, ideas. Some scholars say tightening of the belt is literal in that by this time of the month the Prophet ﷺ would have lost a little bit of weight from fasting. So he would tighten his belt. And that's certainly a, a realistic possibility. But that's not necessarily what the hadith is uh, really getting at. Uh, tightening of the belt could also mean one's preparedness to work even harder. In, in, even in English language, when we talk about tightening your belt, it means you must be prepared for hardships. Be prepared to struggle. So tightening the belt here would, be, would mean to be prepared to wake up in the night time of these last ten nights and, and pray extra prayers at tahajjud time. Probably, many of us are probably not even sleeping. Because by the time Taraweeh is finished by 12, 12, 15, and Qiyam begins at 2, there is really not much time. By the time you get home, maybe relax for 10-15 minutes, there is no time to really sleep. But there is a third opinion regarding the tightening of the belt, and some scholars say this is a reflection of, perhaps, of the Prophet ﷺ not even engaging in intimate relations with his wives during these last 10 nights in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This opinion, I mean, in my humble view, is a little bit uh, problematic because to begin with, as the Prophet ﷺ has informed us in authentic hadith, engaging in intimate relations with one spouse is in itself an act of worship. Remember the famous hadith that is Sahih, in which the Prophet ﷺ, he said to the Sahaba, وَفِي بُضْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ أَجْرٌ And even in the, the intimate relations one of you have with your spouse, with your wife, there is ajr for that, there is reward. And the Sahabas were amazed. They said to the Prophet أَيَأْتِي أَحَدُنَا شَهْوَتَهُ وَيُؤْجَرْ عَلَيْهِ A person fulfills his desires, right? the sexual desire, and he's still rewarded for that, they were amazed. The Prophet ﷺ said to them, Do you see if he had fulfilled it in a manner that it was haram, would he incur sin? And the Sahaba said, Sure, he would incur sin. The Prophet ﷺ told them, Similarly, when a person fulfills this desire in a way that is halal, he gets rewarded, ajr. But, anyways, the point is, the Prophet ﷺ, brothers and sisters, during these last 10 nights, set the example for us. He, 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 he is the role model. He led by example. 
and he himself worked harder. So Shadda Mi'zara tightened his belt. Wa'ahya Layla, which literally means to make his night come alive. That is to wake up and pray in the night. Wa'ayqada Ahla, and he would also wake up his family. Because these last ten nights, in particular the odd nights, are perhaps the most meritorious nights of the year. In fact, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, when uh, he was asked this question, what day is the best day of the year? He said that the best daytime in terms of daylight hours is the day of Arafah in the year. But the best nighttime in terms of nighttime, lack of uh, uh, daylight hours, the nighttime, Laylatul Qadr is the best. And the Prophet salam has encouraged the Ummah and has exhorted the Ummah to search for Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. He himself, as he, uh, uh, Al-Imam Bukhari tells us in a hadith in his Sahih, Allah had informed him of the exact nights, but Allah took away that knowledge from him alayhi salam. And as a result, he told the Sahaba, he said, search for it, the Harram, search for it diligently in the odd nights and the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And the Prophet ﷺ said, perhaps this is what is better for us. Because now a person has to be committed and dedicated to pray every single night or on the odd nights. To pray one night alone, it's not a big deal. It doesn't really take much commitment. Anybody can do that. But to pray at least five nights takes a lot more commitment and dedication and sincerity. A lot more willingness to sacrifice, right? Because you're waking up at 2 in the morning or the Qiyam starts at 2. So maybe by 1.30 you have to be up if you fall asleep. And even if you didn't go to sleep, you might still be somewhat sleepy and tired. But that willingness to sacrifice, to forego your own sleep, knowing that in the day you might be a bit sleepy and tired, but you're still willing to do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to achieve the blessings that Allah has promised for this night. This is what is important, brothers and sisters. Now for those who started fasting on Saturday, tomorrow night, Friday morning, is when the first of the odd nights or the first of the last ten nights of Ramadan begins. If you started fasting on Sunday, then your first night will be Friday night into Saturday morning. But let, let, let us not allow this to create divisions among us. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, is much greater than to be limited by physical space and time. So the fact that my odd night might be your even night and your even night or your odd night, my even night, doesn't really matter. What matters is we both are following what we believe is the right thing. And Allah's mercy, as I said, is much greater than to be physically limited and contained by time or space. As long as we don't follow desires, the reward is guaranteed. It is following our desires that Allah has warned us about. Not to follow desires, follow the process. Follow that process you believe, honestly, is the right process. Whether you're right or wrong in the end, Allah will give you a reward. The Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith in, the, in Sahih al-Bukhari as well that if a hakim or a scholar does proper research and investigation إِذَا al hakim does proper research and investigation فَأَخْطَأَ فَلَهُ أَجْرٌ but he makes a mistake in his conclusion he still gets a reward فَلَهُ أَجْرٌ وَإِنْ أَصَابَ فَلَهُ أَجْرًا and if he's correct in his conclusion then he gets a double reward now why does the one who makes a mistake in the end gets a reward? Because he followed the process. He did his, his proper investigation and research. And that's what's important. We may or may not be correct in the end. We strive to be correct, but we can, we can miss that. But what is also very important is the process we follow. So that should never be a point of contention and division among us, amongst us as Muslims. What is important, we're all striving to achieve the blessings, the great blessings and virtues of Laylatul Qadr, about which the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَحْدِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Whoever prays in the night of Qadr with sincere devotion to Allah and hoping for a reward from Allah will have all his or her previous sins forgiven. 
And Allah the Exalted tells us about this night in Surah Al-Qadr, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. The night of power is better than a thousand months. A thousand months of ibadah, mind you. Not a thousand months of wasting time. A thousand months of ibadah. So what a person may spend his or her whole lifetime trying to achieve, Allah has given us a chance to achieve that in this one night. But we have to have the commitment and the dedication and the sincerity. The taqwa, as Allah says in the Quran about the sacrifice, Eid al-Adha, He says, it's not the meat, nor the blood that reaches Allah. It is not the flesh of the animal or the blood that reaches Allah. However, it is the piety, the taqwa, the remembrance of Allah and the consciousness of Allah you have. This is what reaches him. So let us, brothers and sisters, make, make use of this wonderful opportunity that Allah has blessed us with. It is a great blessing. For there are many of us, for there are some of us who have not even or have not lived to see this day, these days, these last 10 nights. I know of a few individuals who passed away only a few days ago. And then there are those who are still alive but they're ill. And they're not able to spend their, their, their time in these nights in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is a great blessing that not only have we witnessed the month, but that Allah has caused us to be alive and to be healthy and to be strong to witness these last 10 nights. This is a tremendous blessing. That is our opportunity to make best use of this time. Uh, one last thing I'd like to say, and there are lots of things to say. Um, many people believe or seem to have the belief that Lalatul Qadr is the 27th night of Ramadan only. And this, of course, is a grave mistake, brothers and sisters. This is a mistake. Because no one can claim to know more than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the hadith in Bukhari and Sahih Muslim are very clear. In which the Prophet salam mentioned the fact that he was informed of the night and he was made to forget it. And there are numerous ahadith in which he encouraged the Muslim Ummah to seek the, the, uh, the Laylatul Qadr. In some ahadith, he said in the last 10 nights. And in others, he narrowed it down a bit to the odd nights of the last 10 nights. The odd nights of the last 10 nights. And so uh, in, the, in the, the majority of the scholars are of the view and opinion based on these ahadith that no one knows precisely which night is Laylatul Qadr. What we know precisely though it, is that it is one of the odd nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And if you're worried about your even night being somebody else's odd night, do all 10 nights, mashallah. You have no headaches after that. Uh, pray every single night in the, in, the, in the last 10 nights. If you're able to come to the masjid, if not at home, mashallah. Wake up, wake up your families, your children, and pray with them, make dua with them. This is a time for salah and for, for, for dua and dhikr. So uh, just bear that in mind that the authentic hadith, I mean, there is one hadith in Sahih Muslim that seems to indicate it is the 27th night. But this is just one hadith, brothers and sisters, as opposed to numerous hadith that tell us it is in one of the odd nights, did not specify. So it doesn't make sense for a person to take just one hadith that contradicts numerous ahadith that are also Sahih in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Uh, perhaps another time we can uh, we can talk about the explanation of this hadith uh, that was narrated by Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu, and he said that you know he knows it's the 27th night. In fact, the scholars say that what he meant was in that particular or in a particular year it was on the 27th night, because the scholars, based on the ahadith and the signs that the Prophet had given to the Sahaba uh, in order to verify after the fact which night was Laylatul Qadr. It seems from all of this that every year Laylatul Qadr is not, not on the exact same night. So one night it could be the 20, 25th night, another year it could be the 27th night. And the scholars say that the hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'b in Sahih Muslim really speaks to one particular year when it turned out that it might have been the 27th night, not that it's always the 27th. Because there is no way Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu arda 
despite how great a companion he is, would ever have any knowledge more than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the hadith, Ubay did not say that the Prophet alayhi salam said that it's the 27th night. He said, I know which night it is, it is the 27th. So, so uh, the, the opinion and the view of the majority of our scholars in the past has always been that it's one of the odd nights and this is the best way to ensure that we don't miss this virtue and this is a tremendous virtue worship of one night in fact just a few hours is better than as Allah says than a thousand months more than 83 years of our lives so this is a great great opportunity brothers and sisters we could not ask for better than this from Allah the exalted but it will take some sacrifice from us and if we're willing to do the sacrifice and if we're willing to do the struggle, then the reward is there for us to, to achieve and to acquire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed from mankind. And may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be able to wake up and, with our families and spend the, these last nights of Ramadan in prayer and in worship and in dua. And may He accept from us our prayers and our dua and our uh, good deeds. And may He cause us to come out of the month of Ramadan among those people who's, who, whom He has set free from the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our salah, our siyam, our qiyam, our ruku, our sujood, our dua and all our good deeds. And may He forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.